Hi, I'm Travis, and this is Handcrafted Driven Lady. So, to, this week I'm taking a short break on the CNC router table. It's still coming along, um, but this guy decided it needed some attention while I uh, was uh, working on the router table. This is my carpet cleaner. It is a Hoover Power Scrub Deluxe, and arguably it is the best carpet cleaner for uh, for residential use on the market. I say that because there's something like 26,000 28,000 reviews on this thing at four and a half stars on Amazon. Um, again, not sponsored by anything. I've owned this thing for five years. Um, arguably, this has two major design flaws. Uh, one really kind of applies to, or that's happened before, the other one is just recent and that sucks. So, the recent one is the plastic clip that holds the suction piece on broke. Now, this is designed to be removable so you can come through and you can clean it and snake it and all that fun jazz. Um, not much that you can do to fix that except for epoxy. That's kind of going to be the fix. But, the part on this that I plan on also fixing, and the reason I wanted to bring you guys along, instead of just epoxy and call it in a day, is I need to fix the spinema things, brushes on the bottoms. They actually used a fairly ingenious design, and I say fairly ingenious because I like the idea. Um, it's essentially, um, I want to say like a turbocharger, but it's probably not right, but it's basically, um, a gearing uh, or a um, like a water wheel inside of a tube so as it sucks air in which the motor's doing it pulls air past the uh, uh, turbine piece spins it which causes it to spin the problem with that design is is they put which is also kind of cool bearings on the on the bottom of the mechanism really kind of a cool idea the problem is, is it's sucking moisture past it. And if you have a bearing on there, that bearing is going to seize because of the moisture. That is kind of the biggest problem with this. Now, these are a hundred and a quarter. They're not super duper expensive, but why go buy a new one when you can spend $10 on bearings? Uh, you, I think it's like $30 to replace the whole unit itself inside. Um, but. I'm going to do a teardown, I'm going to show you how to get to that unit, how to replace the bearing, and then how to put it back together. So, yay! This assembly is easy, you just have to remove the brush head assembly which pops out. You have to remove the four screws up front near the brush head assembly, and there are four screws near the back. There are also two screws on the top of the unit that will also need to be removed as well. I removed the latch, that wasn't needed. All right, so here's the culprit. So this guy's probably seized up, which isn't allowing this assembly, assembly to do its thing, okay? So, so what we'll do is we're gonna pull this piece off, which is kind of like a, uh, um, controls the, a baffle in here, but we have to basically pull this whole unit off. So we're just gonna gently, There are three screws holding this mechanism in, two up front and one in the back. Now all screws in this uh, unit are all Phillips heads, they're all the same length and they have all the same thread pitch. Uh, if you're going to use a power tool like I am, be very careful because you're just screwing straight into plastic. This lower plate needs to come off so we can access the lower bearing and get into the mechanism to clear it up. Now there are four screws, three of which I easily saw. One is countersunk kind of deep into it. So gotta remember to pull all four of them out. Um, the uh, tool was able to get to three of them. I, would, I had to end up using a long handled uh, screwdriver to get the last one. All right, you can see here what I was talking about. See all that corrosion? I was in here less than a year ago. All that gunk and corrosion. That is a bearing that's less than a year old, or less than two years old. Completely jammed in position. This is why I say that this uh, 
design is in it's genius but very poorly executed so what i'm gonna do is i'm probably gonna take this apart a little bit more i'm gonna clean up the shafts a little bit more see all that in there that was white lithium grease i put on this thing to help to hopefully help reduce some of this but as you can see that didn't work so i'm gonna go ahead and get this cleaned up and we'll come right back I was slightly wrong. This bearing is not a year old. This bearing up in here is a year old. That's the reason why it still spins so nicely. Um, but that, that explains why I broke the tab. It uh, explains why I got into this. So you have to get into it. You have to remove the uh, um, turbine from the shaft, pop the shaft off. I just remembered when I did this first time, I didn't get this bearing out. And here's why. Really stuck in there is a blind hole. But you see I got it out first. Go out to your cheap throwaway tool store and buy a set of picks. I literally broke the tip off. I spent five minutes prying on this. What you have to do is you have to get down in here between the bearing and the plastic and you have to try to get it to pop up a little bit I just kept on working side to side eventually I broke the tip off off of this but it was enough to loosen this guy up so I'm gonna clean up down here with a little bit of paper towels um, I'm gonna pick in there and get a little bit of some of that other stuff dunked out then what we'll do is we're gonna drop a bearing in and just in case you thought I'd be a jerk and not tell you what the bearing is it is a 4R 2RS. You don't have to buy this brand, but that's what it is. I bought them in a 10 pack because it was like $5 for one or $10 for 10. So kind of a no brainer there. And you can see that spins much better than this rusty guy. Also, you can see the same diameter, same diameter, same interior diameter. So, that guy's going to go roll away. I'm going to clean this off. Then, I'm going to start with the assembly and get this all back together. So, I cleaned it up a little bit more. Got the uh, pocket cleaned up. Now, I'm going to use white lithium grease. I used it a year ago, and I haven't had any major issues. I don't know if that's going to be proper for your, or for this. Like I said, I've used it for a year and there's been no problems. Um, but I'd recommend you doing your own research because I'm not always right. Just ask anybody. So I'm going to reassemble this. We're going to get the uh, bearing back in, into the new bearing in, get the whole thing assembled and put it back together. Also, while you're, while you're cleaning this, be gentle with it. It is all plastic. It does go through cycles on temperature and things like that. Also, do be gentle with it. Like, I, like that. So you might be wondering why the weird angle. Well, it's for two reasons. One, we're getting ready to test out the... Uh, Spin them a thing. And two, I can't do it. Well, I could do it another way, but there's two factors that you have to remember when testing this thing out. The further it is laid down, the, the device from is the further that baffle will be open. So if you test it vertically, not gonna get anything because it's gonna be the baffle's gonna be closed, nothing. Second bit is this operates off of kind of like a negative pressure design. So the air gets sucked up through the nozzle as you pick up the uh, debris off the carpet. It has a bypass, let me show you that bypass. It is a bypass into the spinema thing, okay? Air flows through, it goes through, it makes the thing spin. Now, as the air comes in, it goes up into the tank and then down into here. This causes a bit of a back pressure in order to force air to be sucked through here, okay? Hence the screen. 
there's actually probably an opening on the well there isn't an opening on the back of the uh um, intake but because of its location it's right there underneath there there's a lot of moisture which is why i believe mine rusted out so in order for testing i have this laid down i'm gonna have to cover this inlet hole in order to get enough back pressure to spin the thing thus so let's see if it works Hey, it worked. So that's one of the two problems that this, this is having. Here's the other one. This little clippy piece that the uh, intake clips on broke right here. So I'm probably just gonna take some five minute epoxy and just epoxy the dang thing down. Because what happens is because it doesn't have a place to hook, the side comes up and it pivots like this which puts pressure on the tank, which I don't really care about, honestly. But more importantly, it doesn't keep the nozzle pressed against the carpet to suck it in. So let me finish putting all the screws in. I'm gonna go grab the vitamin epoxy, and then we're gonna see how I'm going to epoxy this down. So I was digging the room for my epoxy, and I realized something. Well, one, I don't know where it is, but two, more importantly, inevitably when I have to tear this thing down again and fix it, Hopefully this will be the last time, but I doubt it. I'm gonna to wanna to be able to get in here. If I put epoxy on this, I'm done for. I'm done on getting this thing apart. Especially because really the only points of contact you have are this one and this one between the frame and the uh, water uh, siphon piece thingy. So I thought to myself, well, Travis, you can't find that, but you know what you can't find? A glue gun. We, we don't need to be that permanent. So I'm gonna put a big old glob here, here, and I think right here, maybe it'll stick. So, is it perfect? No, not even close. But maybe it'll stick long enough where I actually can clean the carpet. So, I mean, let's go non, not as permanent, and then go permanent versus going permanent and being done. So, all right, let's get some, Blarp, another one there, and a ridiculous amount right here, because why not? Also, it's getting hot, so it's getting less viscous. Look at that, you can see you can touch. Got the points. Anyways, Gentle, gentle. <laughs> it popped. Anyways, I'm gonna let that harden up. But that's it. That should do it for now, for this guy. It should be able to get another year or two of service out of it, hopefully. And uh, yeah, I, I hope this helped you and uh, I hope that uh, you save a couple bucks instead of throwing away something that mostly works. It just there's a part of it that doesn't. So, anyways, thanks for watching. Have a great evening.